Good afternoon, guys. It's working. Bring you a quick update on Bitcoin. If you guys are having a wonderful afternoon, uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar. This is the four-hour chart on Coinbase. And before I start, guys, I actually want to sh uh, send a uh, big shout out to everyone that has sent uh, tips. A couple of you guys were very generous. Want to thank you very much for those tips. Uh, again, if you ever wanted me to uh, personally thank you by name, uh, please send me a DM on uh, you know if you want to keep it private on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, Something like that on uh, on Discord. Even though I'm uh, I'm I'm on there in name, I don't have anything on there other than uh, uh, just an account. But uh, but yeah, by all means, or just leave me a comment publicly, and I'd love to thank you personally. But again, thank you, thank you very much, man. It just lets me know I'm doing something right, and I can, I cannot thank you enough. Much much gratitude. All right, again, looking at Bitcoin, the U.S. dollar, four-hour chart, Coinbase. Last time we spoke, Bitcoin had broken down out of this wedge, um, very sloppy one, but a wedge nonetheless, and it did end up. Uh, finding support. Told you to look for support on this ascending support line here. It found support on this ascending support line for about 24 hours, almost a full day. We found support at this area and then we did end up breaking down. And this is why, guys, I tell you to wait for a decisive break below. You got all the warning in the world uh, that you wanted on this, guys. We came back down, was snaking around this for about 24 hours, which in and of itself, anytime you see something, whether it's huddling right below resistance for an extended period of time or right on top of support for an extended period of time without any major bounce, that's typically more often than not, I'd say, I think it's about 70 five percent something like that that it will break either if you're huddled below resistance it will break above resistance or if you're huddling on top of support for any extended period of time without a major hit up it'll break below support this obviously was that guys but even so you got if we look in here you got i, I told you what a decisive break below a decisive break uh, being a four hour open and close you literally got that on the candle prior to this breakdown so you had more than enough warning that this that price was going to break down below this guys and of course when it did it did violently we ended up breaking down not just down to our 10,400 which if if you remember I told you last time that I did not think 10,400 was going to hold on this second pass I was not going to take that um, I told you that we were very likely at least coming to 10,000 to fill that CME gap remember I told you 10,000 would uh, um likely be the first area of support again for at least a bounce because again we had those cme gap there right there at ten thousand. let me go ahead and just pop that up for those of you that don't know what i'm talking about there it is uh we do have that cme gap guys and we can see if we just blow it up here we've got a cme gap at um uh 10,070 and then down here at 8,500 um that eventually will get filled doesn't mean it has to happen on this pass but eventually i believe it will get filled does it have to get filled nope but eventually probability says it will. Nonetheless, we have come down here, haven't completely filled this gap, but it is pretty damn close, at least enough for a nice little bounce. Now, do I think we're gonna continue to the upside and does this gap have to get filled before we continue up? Not necessarily. No, it does not have to get filled before we continue up. That being said, my bias now is bearish in the short term. In the long term, nothing has changed. Long term, my bias remains bullish. Short term, Excuse me. Short term, I do think there's a good chance we come back down and test 9,400. I think that for numerous reasons that we come down here and we go from our swing low to our swing high. This is from our last 21% correction to our swing higher of 13,800. We can see as we've talked, whoop, what did I miss? 13,800 to our swing low of, there it is. Okay, that makes more sense. All right, so, um, we can see that we came down on the first pass and hit perfectly on the 50. We discussed this. We talked about this uh, numerous times. Um, and then I told you guys, if we did break down below that 50, the next major area, uh, the next major FIB level was going to be the golden ratio right there at that 618 FIB level, which literally almost to the dollar is sitting right above that $9,400 area, which of course we know visually is a nice visual support and has been a support for a decent amount of time. So, for these reasons, I do think there's a good chance we come back down and test at least 9,400. I would expect a nice little bounce off that zone. As I told you yesterday, 10,000 would be a nice zone to scalp. Um, if you did take that scalp trade, you should be in about, uh, uh, you, you had an opportunity to have almost a $500 profit there. Don't know if you took it or not, but if you did, congratulations. Don't get greedy, especially if you're trading on leverage. Take your profits, be happy, and get out. Even if we continue to the upside, that is a nice, successful trade don't get greedy, especially in a downtrade, man. Don't tempt fate. That's how you end up in a place you don't want to be. Um, yes, hindsight's always 20-20. If it continues up, you're going to wish that you had held. But if it continues down, you're going to thank God you sold. And either way, if you're in profit, you sell in profit. That is a good, good trade. 
So please be disciplined, guys. Not financial advice. You do what you want to do. You guys are big boys and girls. All right. Uh, coming back out here to the daily, though, as I said, the next major fib level is going to be that 618 right there at 9,400. Cannot forget that closing the gaps, uh, closing both those gaps would bring us down to 8,500. Is that in the cards? Yes. Is it probable? Eh. I don't know. I, I think more 9,400 is uh, uh, is a lot more probable than 8,500 at this point. We'll have to wait and see how price reacts at 9,400 before I do make that call. Checking our daily indicators, looking at the RSI. RSI still, uh, you know, it still actually looks, looks like a nice healthy correction. It's not until we do break down below about uh, about 46.5 on the RSI that I'm going to start to get concerned. 46.5, as you can see, once we broke up in February, once we started our bull run back in February, which I believe this is a bull run at the nonetheless, let's call it the uptrend. Uh, for those of you that believe this is just all a uh, um, um, uh, bearish retracement, um, but we'll have to wait and see if it is. Um, but for the, I, I'm not in that camp. I do believe the bull run has begun. Nonetheless, we started that uptrend back in uh, feb, uh, early February, and since then, this uh, 46, uh, 46 by five has been a very, very good support on the RSI all throughout up until now. Now, if we t if we end up dropping down below this, I'm going to start to get a little bit concerned. Now, is that going to mean the bull run is over and that the uh, that the bears were right? This was just all a bear market rally? No, not at all. Um, I'll just get a little bit concerned that we're going to come down much lower. By much lower, I mean that $8,500 area, 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 possibly down here about to maybe $8,250-ish, somewhere thereabouts. I'd be surprised if that did break. Uh, but again, let's wait and see kind of how this ends up playing out. We also have a fresh cross of the uh, of the signal line and MACD line on the daily MACD histogram crossing into bearish territory. Um, so again, um, this uh, you know this was uh, was um, all of this was signaling um, potential uh, more bearish downside, and of course we are seeing that follow through today. Now. I'd be remiss if I didn't discuss the clear weekly candle uh, close that we had yesterday. And this happened late in the day, guys. This was your first signal that we were very likely going to come back down and take out that prior low, that prior local low, I should say. And, of course, we have done that now, dropping down to about 10,000, a little below that, 9,950. But this was a nasty, nasty weekly wick, guys. No question about it. This was just brutal. And, of course, this would indicate the potential that price continues down here. Now, this is Bitcoin. We do have... Remember, looking at these CME gaps, guys, let me go back to these CME gaps. Looking at these CME gaps, let me go back to the four hour. There's no question that these act as support, guys. Remember, CME gaps just means that's potentially a nice area of either, depending on what we're looking at, either a, uh, a supply zone, which would be a uh, an area of resistance, or a demand zone, which would be an area of support. And all that means is a demand zone just means there are potentially many, many buy orders sitting down here. And that's what these gaps represent. Very likely, a lot of buy orders that went unfilled. So let's wait and see if, in fact, we do have some buy or some uh, enough buy orders to continue to even if price does come back down and completely closes this gap which we really only have about another $100 to close that gap um, if that does happen guys let's wait and see if there's enough momentum to drive price right back up again we had this nice bounce if you took that scalp trade congratulations um, absolutely congratulations guys you did a great job um, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean until we do take out I would say let me go back to the chart I would say until we do take out um, this prior area of consolidation pretty decisively. So I would say a four hour open and close above about um, $11,100 until that does happen, guys. Uh, again, my bias is going to be down. Now, could we retrace all the way up? Yeah, we certainly could. We could come up and retrace, you know, as high as uh, $10,800, $10,900. And, you know, that was an area of support and it could start turning into resistance, which would be extremely bearish if it did. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, my bias is going to be at least coming back down and closing that gap. So maybe um, uh, there's a little bit of a uh, difference in price between CME's chart and this uh, and the spot charts. Um, so we'd have to come back down a little bit lower, probably come back down, uh, maybe wicking below this 9,950 zone. Um, but again, maybe even coming down to this $9,400 zone. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Um, but this is where most of my buy orders sit, 9,400. Will they get filled? We'll have to wait and see. But uh, that's where most of them sit as of right now. All right, checking our moving averages, exponential moving averages, and our Bollinger Bands. Obviously, we're finding some support in the bottom Bollinger Bands there. Wick through it, uh, acting as decent support now. Let's wait and see if that uh, does hold. Doesn't look likely. Um, but uh, looking at the uh, looking at our moving averages, exponential moving averages, we've got the 21 exponential um, that has, uh, or excuse me, the eight-day exponential, uh, or excuse me, the eight. 
period exponential on the four hour chart now crossing below the 21. We've got the eight, uh, eight exponential crossing below the 55 and it looks like the 21 wants to cross below the 55. That's a bearish setup, at least in the short term, guys. So that is that does not bode well for the short term. Doesn't mean this thing can't turn around. Just means as of right now, especially if we get this 21 period EMA crossing below the 55 on the four hour chart, that would very likely signal some more continuation to the downside. Now let's look at the daily. Daily, we're sitting finding support right on top of the 21 day EMA. We did break below it here by a wick, pushed it right back up again, acting as support. If we get that daily candle closing below the 21 day EMA, it's going to really get my attention. If we get a daily candle, both opening and closing tomorrow below the 21 day EMA, we could be in for a rough ride here. And again, by rough ride, I mean, you know, maybe come down to that 8,500, potentially as low as uh, uh, 8,250, uh, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But uh, but yeah, would not be a good sign if we get a daily open and close below the 21-day EMA. Now, if we just get a close, you know, again, I can accept that. But if we get an open and close again, that's why I start to get a little bit uh, a little bit more concerned. Um, looking at the uh, looking at the weekly again, we discussed this extremely extremely ugly weekly. That being said, we are well above the eight-day EMA. We have plenty of light between the 821 and 55 week EMA, not day EMA. I mean week EMA. Um, so you know that is a bullish sign. And that does suggest even if we do come down here fairly deep, you know, even if we came down and test 7,000, the fact that we have a lot of light between the uh, the eight week EMA, the 21 week EMA and the 55 week EMA, the more light you see, typically the more support you're going to get. Now, it doesn't mean you can't dive deep into that support, but typically think of it kind of like a uh, like a like a like a. Uh, uh, trampoline. Like you can push down deep into that trampoline, but typically the further you push, the more it's going to spring right back up if and when it does hit bottom. Where that bottom is, you know, depends on how, that depends on the weight of the individual to continue with my uh, analogy there. But when it does hit bottom, the, the push back to the upside is usually very, very strong. So again, this just kind of gives you more, more cushion for that push back to the upside, the more weight there is. Now that certainly doesn't always play out, uh, but that generally, especially in a trend like this, that's generally the idea. All right, checking longs and shorts. I had a bunch of questions on this, guys. I don't want to go too deep into it. Basically, what this is, this was all one person liquidating short positions inside of one minute, all one person. Um, and, and, and the way that they could do that without affecting price, because you remember, about 70% of shorts got liquidated, which typically you think if shorts get liquidated, what do they have to do? They have to buy. And if you're buying, that would affect price, especially when you're talking about something um, um, like this, you know, uh, like you know, 20,000 Bitcoin or something or whatever this happened or whatever this was. I think it was somewhere around 20,000 Bitcoin. Yeah, that would typically, if you're buying that, that would, should affect price, um, you know, it's somewhat. Uh, but we got no effect on price. And the reason that is, is because if you look back here, I did a whole video on this back in, uh, in May, uh, on May the 16th. I believe it was. Actually, I think it was the day after that. But I did a whole video when we had something similar happen back on May the 16th and when it didn't affect price. And the way that happens is on Bitfinex and in the cryptoverse, you know, if, if you were trading in a traditional market, this would be um, it would be illegal to close these things. They call it claiming. You can actually claim your position um, off the books without affecting price on Bitfinex. You cannot do that in traditional markets. You can do that um, in crypto because they're so unregulated. Um, and I didn't know that until this happened and I had to do a little bit of research back here in May. I didn't know that was even possible. Um, and apparently it is. And this really gives crypto a bad name, guys. Um, I, I hate to say it, but this is the kind of thing that gives crypto a bad name. All this trading off books, you know, call this insider trading. Who knows if they, you know, who knows? Who knows what's going on here? But, uh, um, and, and it's just, it doesn't make any sense to try to speculate. Um, but uh, but nonetheless, this is a closing of the position, a technically called a claiming of a position without it affecting price. In other words, it being done off book. Um, and I, I don't want to get into much more speculation than that, guys, but that that, that is basically what happened there. Okay, I've had a couple people ask me for my longer term Bitcoin predictions, um, you know, way out there. And I typically don't do this because I don't put a lot of weight in longer term predictions, guys. I just don't. Um, but that being said, I've drawn this trend line here and I've shared this trend line with you many times in the past. We're currently looking at the monthly chart. This is on log scale. And this is that trend line I've pointed out that basically has been acting as support ever since August of 2012. Um, and of course, we broke that when we broke through uh, um, 6,000 back in uh, November of 2018. Then it potentially acted as a decent area of, of uh, temporary resistance and then we broke up above this uh, very, very briefly. Um, so the point in all of this is not to say this is acting as resistance or support right now. Let's hope it acts as support. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But nonetheless, the point is, and even if I was able to go uh, prior to 2011 here where this this, this chart starts, remember Bitcoin's been trading back since um, uh, 
2009, um, it, would, it would show you that the entire time Bitcoin has been trading for the last 10 years, it has snaked back around this trend line. You know, sometimes coming above, sometimes coming below, but always coming back to this trend line. So I would say this is about as, as good of an indication as any for predicting future price movement. Now, again, I don't like doing this in uh, in timelines, but you know, if we are going to follow this to its logical conclusion, yes, we could say if we come out here to uh, excuse me, uh, if we come out here to um, the end of 2020, it would look like we'd be at somewhere around a 47 to 50 thousand dollar Bitcoin. Now, remember, this could be well above this line and then come back down to it. So, could we be above that? Absolutely. Could we be below that? Absolutely. But again, it eventually finds its way back to the center of this line if history is any guide. So, yeah, that would put us somewhere at the end of uh, um, at the end of 2021. Uh, that would put us somewhere around. Uh, let's see, the end of 2021, so that would put us into six figures, you know, uh, um, a $120,000 Bitcoin, if this thing is accurate. And again, I, this is pure speculation. I don't put, th this is not technical analysis. This is just pure speculation, guys. This is just kind of fun to do. Um, but, but don't put, uh, you know, don't put a whole lot of weight into this. You know, if you really want to get, uh, um, uh, if you really want to start having fun, you pull out your FIB extension to go from the last swing low to swing high. You call this, okay, What is, is this a wave one? This is a wave two. If that's a wave three, then you're going to look for a six, uh, one, six, one, eight extension. And that would bring us up to about $35,000. So you'd say the next major target, once we clear the prior high, would be about $35,000 based on that FIB extension. Now, again, this is just pure speculation, guys. Don't put a whole lot of weight in that. But for those of you that are asking for my longer term price predictions, I'd say this is as good as any. And that would kind of be where I would settle. Um, does a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin sound out of this world in a couple of years? I don't think so. I truly don't. You have to figure what if we have hyperinflation? What if fiat does collapse? You know, a, a dollar is not going to be actually worth the value wise, not what you think it's worth today. Um, you know, if, if we get anything like hyperinflation, which I'm not saying this, guys, I don't want to spread any panic. But, you know, let's say we get some major inflation coming across and the dollar just becomes, you know, much worth much less than what it is now. You know, it wouldn't be um, out of the out of the realm of possibilities to see a, a 40, 50, 60, 100 dollar gallon of milk. Uh, if you think that's crazy, look at Venezuela right now. So. So, yeah, if we have a hundred dollar gallon of milk, what's that going to make Bitcoin worth? We could be a, we could have a million dollar Bitcoin. But the value of it would not be nearly what you think of a million dollars is today, if that makes any sense. All right. So how am I playing Bitcoin here? Um, I, again, my bias is a breakdown here to about 9,400. I do have some buy orders down at 9,400. We'll, I will plan on scalping that zone more than likely. Um, but uh, is that going to hold? We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to have to wait and see what kind of reaction I get off a of 9,400. And I will reevaluate at that time. If that does break down, guys, I think we're going to quickly find ourselves down to at least about 8,800, if not this five. Um, uh, $8,500 zone. We'll have to wait and see. But I do think the first stop would be about 8,000, uh, 8,800, 8,900 before that did end up breaking down. And again, we'll have to wait and see kind of how that plays out. But I do think 9,400 uh, will get a decent reaction. To the upside, guys, if we do end up taking out, if we do end up bouncing here, we'd have to really climb up above you know, maybe 10,900 would certainly get my attention, but I'd like to see a close really above 11,000 before I'll start to think maybe this thing is rallying. Um, now, if we close above 11,500, then yeah, then I'll then I'll be fairly comfortable saying that we're very likely going to come back up and at least test um, 12,000, 12,500, at least test this prior high here. And again, I'll have to reevaluate if and when we get there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap Bitcoin there. Uh, very quickly, going to try to go through your comments. Travis says your talk, your talking speed is perfect. Um, I don't have to watch you in two times uh, fast like other channels. <laughs> thanks, Travis. I'll keep doing that. Uh, Derek says thanks for working. Optical Art brought me here a while back. Keep up the great work. Thank you and thank you to Optical Art, man. He's a great guy. Uh, John from Down Under. He says, uh, how are you? I'm learning a lot from your videos, my friend. I appreciate the time and effort in making these videos. I'm becoming a better trader. Thank you for telling me that, John. That makes me feel good. It really does. I, I mean, it makes me feel so good to know that you're becoming a better trader and these are helping you. It truly, truly does. That's why we do this. Um, all right. Uh, Payment21 uh, LLC says, good to see no nonsense YouTube traders like you. Unbiased information is hard to find on social media. Also, the integrity that you show in your market analysis is rare quality, which is much appreciated here. Thank you. Uh, what would like to ask an expert? Um, Litecoin acts as, uh, as a BTC front runner oftentimes. Why is this? And when does it usually occur? Uh, would be uh, would be great to see you including Litecoin, ETH, and so forth on a regular basis in reaction between Bitcoin and altcoins. Um, can be followed better. Okay, fair enough. Um, I, I may try including that a little bit more. Let's quickly look at it. Now, as far as why, why Litecoin leads the charge in the past, um, I, I, I'm not going to give any speculation as to why it has in the past as far as why it is now. Um, I do think um, now we, with we have we have the Litecoin halving coming up, and I think that's why we're seeing uh, Litecoin um, 
kind of outperform a lot of the other altcoins and why it has outperformed a lot of the other, all, other altcoins here in 2019. As of right now, it does look like it wants to come back down and test about 110. I would expect it to uh, have a decent bounce off 110, maybe back up to 120 and trade that range. 110 does break down. I'd expect to support at this ascending support line here. I would expect to bounce at about $100 here as well. And again, I'd very likely scalp that $100 zone. Um, uh, if $100 breaks down though, guys, um, Again, it'll be a quick draft to this ascending support line. If that breaks down, we're looking at about $90, $91, somewhere thereabouts. To the upside here, uh, I would say we'd need to take out about $125. Uh, if we take out $125, then I think it'll want to continue back up and test about uh, about $140, thereabouts. All right, you also wanted to ask me about Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum is Ethereum is very much like Bitcoin. Ethereum is actually very interesting. The chart is very much like Bitcoin, um, and uh, it's been behaving very much like Bitcoin and not so much like an altcoin, which I think bodes well for Ethereum. I think that uh, signals strength in Ethereum, and I think that means that uh, I think very likely Ethereum does have a decent future. We'll have to wait and see kind of how that ends up playing out there. Um, as of right now, I do think it wants to come back down and test at least about 270, 273, somewhere thereabouts, this, a, uh, this support line here and this ascending support line. We're finding some confluence there. Um, so I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see a bounce off of about 270 ish maybe 273 270 somewhere thereabouts if that breaks down though it'll be a very quick drop down to about 250 and i'd definitely be a buyer here at 250 to the upside if we do take out about 295 decisively if we get a four hour open and close above 295 i think it wants to come back up and test about uh 305 somewhere thereabouts all right uh suraj Suraj, am I saying your name right, Suraj? Um, thank you for stopping by. He says, thank you very much for the chart updates. Um, as always, great TA. We need more subscribers. I've been telling uh, Optical Art community to subscribe to you as you've been the best TA out there among the YouTubers. Thank you very much, Serge. I really, really, really do appreciate that. And again, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Please don't take any disrespect. Um, I don't mean to. That's not uh, certainly not my intention. All right, JL Wolf says, just because you're uh, just because you're paranoid regarding two separate everything doesn't mean... Um, it isn't true. Thanks for another great video. Yeah, you're right. I guess you're talking about my last video when I told you I had two separate everything, computer, two separate, uh, actually, I've got three separate IP addresses. I, I am paranoid, man. I really am. But you're right. Just because you think they're out there doesn't mean they're not. All right. Uh, Mang T. Bo, if I'm saying your name right, I apologize if I'm not, says, thanks for the analysis. You can plant a baby in me anytime you want. <laughs> Oh man, I yeah, I don't even know how to react to that. I know I sent a comment to it, uh, but hey, yeah, I don't even know how to react to that. Thank you. I should say thank you. Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. All right, Erno says thank you. Thank you, Erno. Uh, Twelfth root. Uh, I know you really like EOS for a hold. EOS BTC very low. Thoughts on that? All right, EOS. Yeah, most of the altcoins are uh, terrible to BTC. Um, EOS is no exception at this point. Um, EOS I think is a very good long term hold in my opinion. Not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but yes, in my I, I'm I'm both an investor and a trader. I've got two separate portfolios. One in my long-term hold portfolio, which I do not touch, and the other one is my trading portfolio. I've got no EOS in my trading portfolio. I'm not trading it right now, and I very likely will not trade it unless we get some um, um, some more uh, a more uh, def defined pattern here or until we do break up above about uh, 70,000 Satoshi. Um, if one of the, When one of those two things happen, I'll be more interested in trading EOS. That said, I do hold a decent number in my long-term hold portfolio, and I'm not selling it. Um, yes, it's doing terrible against Bitcoin. Absolutely, most of the altcoins are, and I think that's going to be pretty par for the course. I would say that Bitcoin is going to dominate this bull run. Um, that being said, doesn't mean we're not going to get some spikes in altcoin where they outperform Bitcoin, but I think as a whole, Bitcoin is going to do much, much better. This is not 2017, guys. I can't say that enough. I think Bitcoin is going to do much better than everybody expects. Um, as of right now, um, does look like, uh, let's see, does look like EOS wants to come up and test about uh, 56 56,600 Satoshi, somewhere thereabouts. I have to reevaluate um, at that point. Um, if we do break below about 52,800 Satoshi, I do think it'll be a quick drop back down to about 49,800 Satoshi. But overall, I do think EOS is a great hold. Um, again, though, not financial advice. Uh, Skinner says, thanks, Working. Do you see the shorts move? How is that possible? We discussed that, Skinner. Um, so, uh, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Um, Aloha Boya says, excellent TA, impartial, measured. Uh, speech speed was just right. I tend to run YouTube on 1.5, mostly to optimize time. I'm very bullish on BTC in the long run. We surely have seen plenty of action on its ASIN to 10, uh, to uh, 100k yeah you're exactly right man um and uh, and thank you i will keep the speed uh, as it is my uh, speech as it is uh, jc says you nailed yesterday's call thanks jc aals says thanks working uh, thank you uh borgus borg borgus Glaggy. 
Uh, sorry, I, I, again, I don't mean any disrespect. Uh, you say, thanks, good to see you posting on Crypto Compare. They're a feisty crowd over there. Yes, they are. Do you uh, ever do long-term targets or do you uh, stick to more media? Again, most mo mo mostly immediate, not so much long-term, but uh, but I did do long-term this time. Um, and so there you go. Uh, Nikolai says, thank you. Can you please look at BTC domination and talk about it if you have any idea? Uh, thank you uh, for your time working. You're welcome. Yeah, let's quickly look at BTC uh, domination chart. Uh, domination. Dominance chart. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's dropping about 63.3 right now. Um, looks like it wants to drop back down to about, uh, yeah, probably back down to at least 63. We may find some support at 63. 63 breaks down. I do think it's going to be a very quick drop to approximately 60. Uh, 60, 61 ish, somewhere thereabouts, and I have to reevaluate. That does mean that um, altcoins may have some potential to uh, for some money to flood into altcoins. Altcoins, a lot of them do look like they may be bottoming out. That's a that's a big asterisk there. May be bottoming out. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, typically as as the dominance chart drops, that means there's some um, opportunity for altcoins. Um, so that's that's kind of how you read that chart. But yeah, as of right now, I would say um, if this if it's going to continue down to about 63, if 63 breaks down, guys. Um, yeah, I do, I do think it wants to come down to about 61-ish, somewhere thereabouts, which, again, may give you some uh, some potential for uh, um, some movement into some altcoins. All right, Ballsy says, thank you. Thank you, Ballsy. God, that name's cracking me up. Carter, uh, it's not a wedge, not even a slopey wedge. What? It's not a wedge. Not oh, are you referring to my, uh, to my, what? Are you referring to this? Uh, let's go back here. Not even a slappy wedge. Yes, you're referring to this more than likely. That would be my guess. I would have to disagree with you if this is what you're talking about. That is, it's a very sloppy wedge, but that is literally the definition of a wedge. Definition of a wedge is a trend line that creates a series of lower highs and higher lows. We have a trend line. We have a series of lower highs, higher lows. Now you can, you can argue about what type of wedge that is, but to say that is not, a, I mean, we, that is clearly a wedge and we have a, a, a perfect breakout of that wedge. I, 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 I don't even know how to answer that. I guess some people just like to, uh, I don't know, man. Um, hey, Carter, wish you all the best, buddy. All right, Carl Garbu says, great video. How about uh, Seller? I don't know anything about Seller, but uh, I did see you ask that before, so let me just quickly look at it. Yeah, I mean, this is a very, very new coin. Um, it's very difficult to, uh, um, with, with a coin that has no history like this, and I know nothing about it fundamentally, it's very difficult to uh, to analyze a coin like that. Um, and, you know, with a lack of history, the, the analysis becomes a lot less accurate. Um, but I would say, we, you know, we have a strong rejection here. Uh, we're sitting right on top of the 21-day EMA. Um, uh, let's see if we can get a bounce off that, guys. Doesn't look great. It looks my bias would be if this does, if this does end up breaking down, it'll be a very quick drop down to about... Uh, uh, 0 0.01, 0 .4, uh, 0 0.0146 cents, somewhere thereabouts. 0 0.0146 cents um, would be my uh, would be my bias. Uh, to the upside, we've got to take out about. Uh, uh, let's see if we can take out about uh, 0 0.0176 cents. I think it would be a very quick rise to about. Uh, uh, 0 0.0194 cents and I have to reevaluate there at that point. But yeah, I don't know anything about this fundamentally. So I'm, I apologize. Uh, I don't know. That's all, that's really all I can tell you. Um, all right. Mr. Says it's going to 6.3 K by the end of July. That's the midterm target. I would agree if we do take out 13.8, uh, $13,800, I would say the next target is about 16, three, 16, uh, 16, two, 16, three, depending on the exchange you're looking at. But yeah, I would agree that that is a target. Is it going to happen by the end of July? Yeah, I, I, I don't like to put a timeline on things. It may, it very well, well, could we'll have to wait and see, but uh, but yeah, I just don't like to put a timeline on things. But you're right, that is the next target when we take out that thirteen thousand eight hundred dollar high. Uh, John says looks gnarly. Yep. Uh, Val Laticus says feels to me like this is market is heading for the twenty one day EMA or twenty one EMA and lower. Why? Because the CME gap fills at ten thousand five, uh, ten k eight nine eight five. Additionally, structurally for long term gains, we need to get out of this parabolic structure. Do you think? Yes, I do. Um, I obviously we did drop below the twenty one day EMA. Um, so yeah, you were right on that. Good call. Uh, CME gap do need to get filled eventually doesn't mean they have to right away but uh, but yeah you're right uh, that that uh, it would be very healthy if they did fill those gaps and then continue to the upside and Bitcoin just didn't continue to go parabolic so I would agree with that some consolidation some filling of these CME gaps would be extremely healthy um, for uh, for Bitcoin I would agree with that Todd says thank you thank you Todd 880 says what happened to BTC shorts we discussed that uh, 880 um, so hopefully that answers your question 12 fruit says looking at BTC historically back in 2009 um, it shows the current bull run as happening very early at the crypto 
yeah, I see what you're getting at here. Yeah, you're basically saying the bull run's happening early. Therefore, is it not a bull run? Are we just, in fact, in a bear market, uh, uh, bear market rally? I don't think so. And I think because, as you point out here, because we are getting so much more interest, um, as just just look at volume. I mean, volume we're sitting at out 28.9. But uh, if we look at the uh, uh, historical volume here, we're jumping up and hitting volume. Um, uh, above 40. Uh, what, what did we do? Uh, 45 billion just the other day. I mean, that is that is just insane, comparatively insane amount of volume, um, truly. So yes, uh, the fact anytime you're getting a flood of volume like that, literally double from what it was at the peak of the last bull run. That yeah, that 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 is why you know that's why that the um, things are happening much 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 quicker. That's why a bear a bear market rally uh, or not a bear a bear market. You know, typically the bear market in the past lasted about uh, um, one and a half years. Where this bear market uh, bear market lasted about one year, assuming that it's over. Um, and so yeah, it was shortened by about six months. That would make perfect sense considering that we're literally at double the volume that we were. In my opinion, again, I could be proven wrong, and if we do drop below six thousand five hundred, I will be proven wrong very likely. Um, but I, but I don't think so. All right, Tofu91 says, not sure why on earth the four-hour MACD is um, uh, four hour is as significant. Don't see the MACD as as significant when it's sloping down. Steep price is obviously going to crash because the four-hour MACD is a reactionary indicator, just like many indicators. So it only shows you what happened in the past. It doesn't necessarily show you what's going to happen in the future. So just because the four-hour MACD is sloping down does not mean price is going to continue to slope down. In fact, I think I gave you an example of many. There are countless examples of when the when when it was sloping down and Bitcoin just took off parabolically. Um, I think the last time it was on June the 19th, as I pointed out there. So yeah, just remember that's it, the, the four hour MACD is a, uh, the higher, the higher time frames I put a little bit more weight on, not so much on this, on the, on the four hour MACD, except for bearish and bullish divergence. It is good for picking out bearish and bullish divergence. Other than that, not so much. All right. Scott Lee says, I'm pretty, uh, butthurt. LOL. I put a sell order at 10,800. So I keep some of my gains in the market. Um, but it just so happens it hit that exact price and bounced up. I'm not a good scalping. Well, I would disagree. I mean, obviously, you you uh, if you did, as long as you didn't buy back in, you're loving it now. I mean, it dropped back down to ten thousand dollars. And you know, just because you get out and protect your profit, even if it would have continued up, that was not necessarily a bad call. Anytime you're in profit and you decide to take some of that profit off the table, even again, even if it kicks up, it doesn't mean you lost money. It just means you protected the money that you gained. Um, and if more people would do that, they'd be a lot more successful in trading. So I would say, nice job. Scott. All right. Um, uh, but that being said, if you wanted to, if you wanted to wait for that confirmation, as I told you, you did have that confirmation here on that four hour open and close. And that would have given you the opportunity to get out anyway. And you likely would have, and you'd be in the same place that you are. So don't beat yourself up. Um, and, uh, let's see, I, I can't even pronounce that. I don't even know. That's not even English. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, I would appreciate an upload. If you have enjoyed this content until next time, guys, please trade safe, take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.